Good afternoon to all. Uh, I think uh, one, one of the last, uh, second last persons to be speaking just before uh, the lunch break. So we'll keep it pretty uh, clean and simple as to you know how we got across to this product and the name. Uh, we created this, uh, we've taken around three and a half years to create this product called Rappi Fuzz. Uh, the name was typically aimed as RESTful API Fuzzing. That's what we started off with. And by the time we started delivering our product earlier this year, and we've already got, uh, to share with you, we've got two large customers already consuming this product. One of them happens to be a Singapore government, which is uh, already using it and consuming it as we speak, which was slightly customized for them for integrating into the DevSecOps environment. And then we also have an Indian customer which is already consuming it for the last uh, eight months to nine months. We've got a couple of freebie customers where you know we've launched it just to get a feedback and it's pretty exhaustive in terms of feedback. So just to give an idea about where we are talking about why we came across with the concept of Rappi Fuzz and API fuzzing. Uh, we are, uh, you, you know, our parent company is, our, is partners to global technologies, but we also started creating something called a real-time cyber incident management system for one of our customers outside India, where it started as a, you know, as a proof of concept and now it's a complete product. The challenges we faced were actually responsible for us to create this product. Just to give you an overview as to what the market looks like, if you look at the global market trends, you know, every single uh, large organization, be it the Deloitte or be it any of those research companies, they're all mentioning and talking about API fuzzing and they're saying, you know, the quantum of uh, attacks, cyber attacks which are happening on APIs are increasing as we speak. Banks, for example, uh, the banking segment is very exhaustive in using APIs. Just look at a quick, uh, I'll just give you a quick example which what something happened in India around two years ago. Somebody made an open statement from one of the global hacking community and said, one of our large softwares got compromised and the entire data was published. Now what data got published was as a result of a, I would say a result of an API being compromised. What that got out was sensitive information, right? Now this is something important because sensitive information if it's being leaked across, doesn't just get leaked across from using a web application, it also comes through the API which is responsible. If you look at the testing market, these are all statistics, I won't spend too much of time in you know, helping you understand this, but yes, there's a huge, huge requirement as the way we are moving forward. With the global competitiveness right now and the way, you know, with, with COVID in the last two and a half years, uh, it's becoming difficult for organizations to keep in tab or with, with technology because what happens is you, you want to outscore your competition and the only way to do it is if you move away from a traditional system of a client server architecture and move towards a complete new technology which is consuming of third party APIs. We do not confuse ourselves with API gateways. So we are not an API gateway company. So I'm, I'm making it clear so that you know people have that very clear what we are going to be doing and what we're going to demonstrate right now. Last one is of course major breaches. You got the parlor API hacks. You got lots of APIs which are getting noticed notice because of the way they're being consumed, right? Now I'll, I'll give a very small statement. I've been making this statement for the last 15 years of my life. I first, I first say the first person in the world is God, right? After that comes the developer, right? Because you go to a developer as a security professional, you'll say, nothing wrong with my product. Everything is perfectly fine. Nothing can go wrong with my product. If you show him one vulnerability or one issue, he'll say, you guys don't understand anything, right? So we faced that issue internally before we started creating this uh, entire technology. Some of the business drivers, I'm not sure if, every, if all of you are versatile with what are the drivers right now. You look at a simple thing like GDPR, it says you can't have excessive data getting exposed indirectly, right? You also have PCI DSS compliance saying you can't have that data going through. You also have something in, in RBI which was issued in 2018 which says for banking and for financial servers, gateways, right? You need to ensure your APIs are secured. They do not mention OWASP 2019 but they give a mention to application security on OWASP. Slightly different, right? So it's like trying to test APIs with the same parameters as you're testing a web application. These compliances are typically what is getting us into the forefront. And officially, this is the first day we are launching a product in the market, you know, to the public, right? Till now, we were just working on a close community with maybe around six or seven customers, just supporting them to get a stable product out. I, I don't work, you know, I, my team doesn't work like, I'm not going to use the country's name, but like those developers where QA is the last in their technology. Here, QA is a very important aspect about our life. So we ensure that whatever we are talking about is first tested internally before it goes through. Now, the cyber attacks and APIs have been increasing, right? Now, this is the biggest challenge. I was speak speaking to one of the CISOs uh, 
just before this started off, right, in the morning, and you know, one of the challenges you shared with me, and somebody else is also here in the room, they said, you know, I've got two problem statements. One problem statement he said is, I have, I do not get a visibility of what I'm consuming, right? And the second problem statement that the gentleman mentioned was, even if I do get visibility, I don't have the right manpower to test. Then another gentleman, another CISO shared with me, you know what, he says, I do get some information about the APIs, but I do not get to understand what to do next because my security professionals are not trained to test an API. I'll give you a very valid uh, reason for this is, we have lots of open positions in, my, in, in Rapifas and Ramujini, but we are we're not able to hire the right person because we just ask them one simple question when they want to join us in the Rapifas team. Give me one single differentiator between a web URL and an API. Nobody has an answer. Oh, API is a web URL has an HTML. I said I can even correspond or communicate using HTML, right? So they're not able to tell. They're not able to, able to figure out cacheless or stateless, right? So they talk, they, they talk, the developers will come and ask you, I've got 15 years experience, I've been working on APIs throughout my life, I understand the Django REST framework, I understand everything, I have made APIs, but when you ask them the fundamental difference, it appears they're only driving the car. Just by driving a car does not mean you are a mechanical engineer, right? So by just writing an API doesn't mean you know how to use an API exhaustively. So they miss out on the best practices, they miss out on the ways the APIs have to be constructed. Just to give an example, you can describe in a RESTful API what is the input and output method. You can describe and say, you want a JSON format, you want an HTML, you want a text, you can describe. Most used format is JSON, right? But people confuse and say, oh, it's only a, it's supposed to give a JSON. Even if you ask them a difference between a REST versus SOAP, they get lost. All they know is it's a WSDL. But what beyond WSDL? Getting a coder is good, but getting a person who understands the technology is important. So we face this problem internally, that's why we started creating this product. In our own product, which is our, uh, another product of ours, we do consume more than 150 own custom-made APIs, right? So we found this as a challenge because my security team always faced this challenge of saying, how do we test? We just get the product at the last minute. There's so many things in the entire product which get missed out. So there were misnomers about, you know, undeclared APIs being consumed, which are lying in the code. Undocumented code, undocumented APIs, which get into the production, which means you are leaving loopholes there. Automation was impossible because most of the testing is manual. Somebody was just walking across right now and said, how do you compare with Burp Suite? How do you compare with AP APG? Or how do you compare with the, this thing? So I said, Burp doesn't do anything. And the quantum of false positives in Burp is typically for web applications. They don't touch REST APIs. They only conform to OWASP 2017 and 21 now, hopefully. They don't talk about 2019. If OWASP was clear about this, we partner with a company called Contrast, founded by Jeff Williams, right, who is the founder of OWASP, right, and they are one of our partners who promote our product in the US. So the first thing is OWASP has got uh, OWASP for web application, they have a mobile security, they have an IoT. Why not for all one single thing? Because they understand and they differentiate the API versus an IoT. They completely do that. The other thing is most of the organizations, one of our large customers came back and asked me the first question when I demonstrated this product, my team. So the CISO says, yeah, tell me one thing in Hindi. Do you have a client? I said, no, this is good. Because what happens is when you give developers machines, they normally have eight GB of RAM. You add another client, another client, another client, they get six GB, four GB left out for working memory, right? So because the client consumes space. So this was an important aspect where we realized that we need to have something completely clientless on the entire horizon. Now, you cannot discover APIs. Your discovery of APIs only happens what the developers declare and give you. The security guys, trust me, we are, I am a security professional with more than three decades in security. None of my, you know, my guys understand, but none of the guys I normally interact with in companies, they do not, they cannot identify. They only know we are doing an API testing. Why they're doing it, they don't know. What they're doing, they don't know. And how to do it, they don't even know that at all. So that gets missed out completely there. And they can't, all they do is test individual APIs. They're not able to test an entire project, right? So if you're given a banking project or you're given a complete IoT project, you'll only look at list of APIs and then you'll start manually testing. If you do that, what is the next step? I ask one other person, oh, you know what? We use, uh, we use uh, Burp and we also use something called Postman. I said, what do you do with Postman? For me, it's a more like a functional testing just to confirm my specification. Or oh, then we look at the outputs and then try to judge. Is that the right way? I don't think so. Because we face the problem. My guys, developers will say, sir, Postman gives me the right result. And then we suddenly realize it's an excessive or sensitive data exposure. Why? Because we're getting sensitive information coming out. So some of the key differentiators on our technology is clientless. It's completely clientless. We don't have a client. We use the proxy. 
the browser proxy as a client. So it means we are not consuming any space in your environment, right? So the browser proxy talks to our own, uh, you can say our own proxy server, which is hosted inside our API fuzzer platform itself. We can give you a complete bill of material of all the APIs. So we have multiple formats to do that. You can actually upload a Swagger format, you can do a proxy format. I was just talking to the team and said, combine both, right? Because it solves a lot of problems. We have that, but we are not giving it to the customer because it's under, under testing. So we can upload a Swagger, we can upload, and you can also do the interactive way of doing it. So the moment you put that, you can do that. The other advantage using our technology is you can also cover the microservices. For example, uh, I just gave an example to somebody. You have a banking, you know, let's say you got a insurance company and they have insurance and cars, bank, blah, blah, blah. You click on one, there's another microservice call. Then it says EMI calculator, another microservice call, right? So all these microservices will be on separate identifiable plat platforms. So in our platform, you can define all the locations where your microservices are hosted. So you get a complete picture about your entire solution or technology. The other important thing is when you're doing the REST web URL, right? So you're able to distinguish. We not only give you the bill of material, we segregate and isolate and say, here's a list of all the interaction points you've uploaded on the Swagger plus the proxy. And these are lists of all the third party web URLs or web URLs you're consuming. Now we bucket and tell you web URL. So you're able to see if you're talking to a Google or something outside your parameter, which should not be because you get a complete landscape, right? Then you're like looking at your REST APIs. You are able to see how many APIs do you have which are custom and commercial. So we don't test commercial APIs. We will not test a Google. We don't allow you to test a Google. We will not allow you to test any third party APIs because that fundamentally, uh, you know, is illegal because the declaration you sign when you to consume the API, it says you can't test my APIs, right? So we don't let you test that API. So you're in, in conformance to that. Then we also segregate those APIs as REST, SOAP, and others. In others, we are right now segregating them as JSON RPC and XML RPC and uh, portions of GraphQL. Now, if you look at the total landscape on the APIs, 95 plus percent is, uh, of the consumption on APIs today is on REST. The remaining 5% is distributed across all these other guys, right? So one of our customers is now asked us in the US, can you get me an integration with GraphQL? We said, it's in our pro pipeline, which was supposed to be somewhere around, uh, I would say Q1 2023, which is around April, May, June. Because they, they are very insistent on closing the deal in December, we said we'll give it to you in December. So our team is also now integrating GraphQL into the product, right? So we, we are able to do all these activities. We can test a single API, we can test a project. So it doesn't make a difference what you want to test, right? You can also do a customization. You, so for example, you may have a lot of test cases. We don't disclose what we are doing. That's proprietary information. So if you want to add any of your test cases which are there, you can do that. For example, right now the team is working on how to do a cell name integration so that you can incorporate the, you know, the functional testing portion into it because the more the testing is, the more data points are exposed, exhaustive will be your testing of your security application. We give a detailed reporting. We just don't look at the OWASP 2019. Like we said fuzzing. We are using mutation-based fuzzing because why? Uh, REST is an architecture. It's not a protocol, right? So we look at the REST architecture. We, we mutate by picking up raw data which is being interacted between the application under test and our API fuzzer. We collect that data and we start fuzzing using that valid data. We're also able to, in, in, by, end of this, uh, by end of this year, we'll also be able to help you to do your business logic te testing, right? None of the security tools are doing business logic testing right now. Any one of them, right? They all they do is security. So we will give you the provision of doing a business logic testing, not on all the, uh, you know, from A1 to A10, but maybe in a couple of them as we grow, right? Because it takes a huge amount of time to build a business logic out there. We have a research team, which is a, a sizable team. Their job is not only to look at creating new test cases, but also to look at creating, uh, I would say, recommendations or remediations. So we, we also simulate. So we have a team which is consistently, continuously making new applications which are vulnerable, right? So if, for example, there's a vulnerability which has been exposed, reported by NIST, et cetera, which says API, we try to create a similar environment in-house. And then we write our own recommendations. We don't look at just OWAS to give us a recommendation. We write custom recommendations which help out people much better because it's an actual developer which is doing it, an actual security guy who's trying to help you out. So we get a real-time information which is important. You can also do webhook integration. Basically, you want to have it integrated in your DevOps platform or a DevSecOps platform. So we have exposed APIs. So one of our large customers, including the one in Singapore, they have done the entire integration into their DevSecOps platform. So they have one single platform where uh, they only use our fuzzing platform. They're not using our dashboard from the front. They have the entire integration done on their DevSecOps platform. Presently, our coverage is on A2, A3, A4, A7, and A8, which is pretty strong enough. 
we do have false positives. If somebody says you have false positives, yes, we do have. No, nobody in the world has zero false positives. But accuracy levels are pretty, pretty high. I won't give a number because it's not right to give a number. It's, it's, it's a judgmental issue then. then. We already have a CICD integration with Jaira and Postman. We are already working on CICD integration with IDEs like Eclipse and uh, I think uh, uh, Visual Studio. We are also doing a Jenkins integration as we speak, right? We are also working on the, uh, we are also incl including the Selenium name integration. So we will have a couple of more IDE and CICD integrations as we speak by the end of this year. And the best thing is it's a Make in India product. So it's a very simple deployment architecture. We don't need anything, right? It's, it's not a rocket science to deploy. It takes us 20, 25 minutes to deploy and move off, right? And for a person, including a security or a developer, it takes him another one hour to understand. It's not cumbersome. So our parent company, our punchline is making security simple. So that same punchline goes back here. Is we want to make security simple. We don't want to make it, you know, typically uh, difficult for people to comprehend, right? Early 90s uh, or late 90s when I was in SafeNet, Thales, I got acquired by Thales, we used to make it, you know, we used to give you that fear, you're going to die tomorrow morning and people would buy security. Now, it doesn't work anymore. So we are trying to make it simple and easy for people to comprehend and ease, use. So it's just the same what you saw on the first slide, just some snapshots. You have the discovery which will help you to discover, so you have different ways to do it. You can do a upload or swagger, you have a WSTL for, uh, for SOAP and you've got uh, completely different for, uh, let's say, you want to do a proxy method. And uh, it goes under the testing of performance, you know, on the OWASP. Then we also do fuzzing because we use the word fuzzer because we're not just conforming to the OWASP 2019. We have our own test cases which are for fuzzing to find out zero day, help you to discover zero day. We did discover one on our own platform, right, which was not reported by OWASP, right? We can't, we have not reported because that's our proprietary information. But yes, we could figure out that we've discovered something which, which was not replicable, uh, you know, which was not reported by any other sections. And reporting, it's pretty exhaustive. You can download the report as a CSV or a P PDF, and we, we, we got that. Mitigation, so we have a detailed mitigation. You get every information, CV information, etc. You also get the information about how to mitigate across. And just to give it complete. So this is our vision is to help you help organizations secure the APIs, right? So that's, uh, just to share, it's a completely make in India product. No foreign technology, no third, no third party integrations. Uh, entire team is out of our own office in Gurgaon. And we are proud to say that I'm a proud Indian that we've been able to get an application product in the industry for Indians to consume. And it's not just Indians, just to share with you, we've already got customers in Australia. We're already talking to people in Singapore. We're talking to people in Europe who are actually working with us to integrate into the DevOps platform. Thank you.